Hello and welcome to our first video on insect rearing. As researchers of insect rearing, we often get questions during guided tours about the concrete startup of an insect rearing facility. For this reason, it was decided to make some videos on how to rear insects so that you can get started as an insect breeder. You probably have a lot of questions such as why would I want to rear insects? Well, that topic is discussed in this video. First, we briefly discuss what insects are and why they might be beneficial to humans. Also, we review whether the rearing of insects is sustainable and then go a bit more into detail about the use of insects in animal feed and human food. We'll start with some general information about insects. What actually are insects? By definition, insects are invertebrates within the arthropod phylum. They do not have a vertebral column, but an exoskeleton consisting of chitin. They have a three-part body consisting of a head, a thorax and abdomen. On the head, compound eyes are present. Insects can therefore perceive more of the environment at one time than uh, humans, for example. They also have one pair of antennae, three pairs of jointed legs and possibly have wings on the thorax. Insects are the most diverse group of animals on the planet. There are more than 1 million described insect species. And in addition, they represent more than half of all known living organisms. The exoskeleton of insects cannot grow like human skin. So in order to grow, the insects must shed. Some insects, such as grasshoppers and crickets, for example, undergo an incomplete metamorphosis with nymphs resembling the adult stages. Other insects, such as mealworms and butterflies, undergo a complete metamorphosis during their development. This means that they undergo a pupa phase before they reach the fertile adult stage. Here, the life cycle of mealworms is presented as an example of a hollow metabolic insect. So an insect that undergoes a complete metamorphosis and thereby undergoes a pupa phase before reaching the adult stage. And here we have the life cycle of crickets as an example of a hemimetabolic insect. So an insect that undergoes an incomplete metamorphosis. The nymphs hatch from the eggs and already look a bit like the adult crickets. Insects often get a negative connotation as pests. Just think of parasites such as lice or mosquitoes that serve as vectors for malaria. Furthermore, insects can also cause major damage to crops or infrastructures. A very topical example of pest insect is the locust plague that is currently afflicting East Africa. The humid climate, due to the exceptional rain last year, has led to the largest locust plague in 70 years. Swarms of the desert locusts, up to 100 km wide, eat crops, leaving millions of people in famine. In January, the cost was estimated at 70 million to combat the pest, which has already doubled. But there are also insects that are beneficial to humans. Just think of bees that we use as pollinators and of which we have been harvesting honey for centuries. But also some insects are used in biological pest control, for example, parasitic wasps, etc. One of the oldest examples in which humans rear insects for their beneficial properties is silk production. For this, the silkworm Bombyx mori is bred. The moths lay eggs in a controlled manner and as soon as the first larvae hatch, they are transferred to a bed of mulberry leaves. Larvae that are ready to pupate and start to spin are placed in a frame. When all pupae are formed, they are harvested and silk can be extracted. The silkworm has been domesticated for over more than 5,000 years. This process has resulted in the fact that the moth can no longer fly and has no color pigments. In addition, the silk production of the domesticated breed is 10 times higher. That brings us to the next application of insects, namely in food and feed. Insects have an interesting nutritional composition for these applications. They contain high levels of essential amino acids, but also interesting fatty acids such as omega-3. 
Due to their high protein levels, they have potential as an alternative protein source to reduce the deficit in the European Union. Insects are already eaten by humans. In some cultures, they even belong to the traditional diet. And also some farm animals, such as chickens, for example, naturally eat insects. So good that we can use insects in human food or as animal feed, but why would we want this? Well, we face many societal challenges. An important one is the increasing population, an estimated 9.7 billion people by 2050. If we all want to enjoy a balanced diet, we will have to focus on alternative protein sources. Insects are one of the possible alternatives. Moreover, our protein sources, which are mostly derived from livestock, must also be fed with proteins. Currently, farm animals are mostly fed with soy, which turns out not to be a sustainable protein source. So, if we want to use insects to obtain more sustainable proteins, obviously we must rear the insects in a sustainable way. This brings up the question, are insects really that sustainable? Let's start with the ecological and economic sustainability of insects. To do this, we have to look at the entire production process, which raw materials are needed and what is produced. From an ecological point of view, it is important that the use of non-renewable raw materials and emissions with a harmful effect on the environment are limited. If we want the process to be economically sustainable, it must be cost effective and not entail excessive costs. This means that insect rearing must be optimized, but because insect rearing is a new concept, we currently are still in the research phase. Currently, a lot of research is being done on the rearing of insect species that can currently be used in food or feed. The most common are house cricket, black soldier fly, mealworms and locusts. Insects are often promoted as an environmentally sustainable alternative to conventional farm animals. Depending on the species, insects have a lower feed conversion and a higher slaughter yield. They are said to contain proportionately more proteins and require less space. Some insects also require less water usage. The energy consumption is usually still relatively high because insects often have certain requirements for their climate conditions. However, until recently, there were no large-scale rearing facilities, so this theory could not be tested against reality. This is done using a life cycle assessment or LCA. This is a standard measuring method to assess the environmental impacts associated with all the stages of the life cycle of a commercial product, process or service. A recent LCA on black soldier fly larvae conducted at Protex shows which aspects of the production process play an important role in ecological sustainability. The ecological impact was compared for BSF puree, so the fresh product, and BSF meal, so the protein concentrate. The impact of the processing immediately becomes clear. We see a much greater impact due to the processing. In addition, it was determined how adjustments to the current process influences the impact. For example, we see that optimizing the feed conversion the use of side streams and the use of renewable energy are important factors that can reduce the impact. In addition, the ecological impact of black soldier fly larvae puree and meal was compared with other protein sources such as fish meal, chicken and soybean meal. Compared to chicken, black soldier fly larvae do well in all areas. Compared to soybean meal, the larvae do well in terms of water. Um, so here we have the soybean meal and here we have black soldier fly. Um, land use also. Here we have the soybean meal and here we have black soldier fly again. And ozone depletion. Here we have the soybean meal and here we have the black soldier fly. 
but mostly only if we look at the scenario in which insect rearing is carried out with optimal feed conversion, the use of side streams and the use of renewable energy. We're now going a bit more into detail about the potential applications of insects, namely food and feed. We'll start with the application of insects in feed. Another reason besides sustainability to use insects in animal feed is the nutritional composition. For animal feed, the main focus is the use of insects to replace soybean meal and fish meal. The graph over here gives an overview of the total protein and fat content of insects compared to soybean meal and fish meal. The nutritional composition depends on the insect species and is given here for black soldier fly and mealworms. If we look at the fatty acid composition, we see some differences but also similarities. We see that insects contain important fatty acids such as omega-3 and omega-6. The amino acid composition also depends on the insect species, but insects contain essential amino acids and even in higher concentrations than fish meal and for some even higher or similar to soybean meal. Experiments have already been carried out in which soybean meal and fish meal was replaced with insects, fats and proteins. Positive effects were observed when protein meal and fats were added to animal feed. However, it is currently not recommended to process the complete insects in feeds because not enough research has been done to draw guidelines on uh, quantities or doses. In the previous slides, we saw that the composition of insects sometimes differs from soybean meal and fish meal. So more research needs to be done before recommendations about quantities of the insects you should add to your feed can be made so that the composition is similar to feed based on soybean meal or fish meal. Also, feeding hens with living black soldier fly larvae would reduce feather pecking in laying hens. Currently, insects are mainly used in pet food. At the moment, this is still a niche market in which the insects are sold as a whole. Mainly, small-scale companies are engaged in this. But in the future, there should also be bulk markets with production on an industrial scale, so as feed for several animal species, also livestock, which will lower the cost price of the production process. But for this, insect production still needs to be optimized. The next application is the use of insects in human food. We'll start with some facts. The word entomophagy means eating insects. At least 2 billion people around the world engage in entomophagy. In fact, more than 2000 different insect species are eaten by humans, mainly beetle larvae, caterpillars and so on. Here we see some examples of insect-based products. We have Finnish cricket bread, below we have a German insect burger, then we have a Belgian cricket bar, Dutch insect lollipops and salted insect snacks. Insects have potential as meat substitutes because they are high in protein. In East Asia, South America and Africa, insects are already part of the traditional diet. In Western countries, neophobia or aversion to new food is present. Especially insects, because in Western countries, insects are associated with plagues and health risks. It is a challenge for the Western population to accept insects as a human food. On the graph, we can see consumer acceptance will not be a barrier towards the development of the insect protein industry for feed, as humans accept uh, insects as animal feed. But when it comes to the use of insects in human food, there is a high neophobia level. In this table, we see an example of how the Western population is set up for insects in human food. A large percentage are not even willingly to try it. 
Here we see an experiment with food based on mealworms. We can see that insect processing has a beneficial effect. If the insects are not visible, people are more open to the idea of entomophagy. We notice that some people want to taste it, but they are not yet willing to pay for it. So we can conclude that more needs to be done to get Western countries used to eating insects because people who are familiar with the idea of entomophagy are more willing to include insects in their diet. Also, insects must be processed so they are not visible in products. Furthermore, efforts must be made to improve the taste and appearance of insect products and insect-based dishes because positive taste reactions obviously decrease the negative reactions on entomophagy. And this brings us to the end of this video on insect rearing. If you have questions or ambiguities, please contact me by mail at the email address presented on the PowerPoint. Thank you for watching and see you next time.